Okay, so yes, uh, I know there's a lot of stuff that's uh, on Moodle, and um, you know, there's that's time consuming and everything else, but some of that stuff will be pushed to uh, next week as well, such as the explanation of the Crystal Living Project number five. Uh, but you, you know, you've got to understand this Friday you have a uh, an assessment on uh, discernment, and we'll finish that up uh, with this lecture. Your Christian Living Project will be due on uh, May 13th, and then you're going to have a vocations project, which uh, I will uh, post the information about that a little bit later uh, in the week, um, maybe late Wednesday night, maybe uh, Thursday, uh, explaining to you uh, what you're going to have to do. Uh, but we, sh we will finish up with the, um, the notes uh, today. Uh, there is a study guide for the assessment that's going to be on on Friday, uh, so we just you know need to, to hang in there. We're we're coming down to the stretch, and we need to finish strong uh, when it comes to uh, our our school. So picking up where we uh, left off with the with the other um, lecture um, is that we were you know we're talking about the idea that we need to be in relationship with God, and we talked about you know, prayer, and that, you know, prayer is, is communication, and to be able to communicate with somebody, you need to be in a relationship with them. Uh, there's a difference between communicating and talking, right? Talking is just flapping your gums, uh, nobody really listens, nobody really paying attention. Um, but when you're talking about communicating, uh, your communication is that, you know, you're getting a message across. I mean, there's, there are, it's the meaning of the words. And so when we're talking about being in relationship with God, uh, it relates to the first point that's up on the screen is that we as human beings are religious beings. And when we talked about that, when we're talking about world religions uh, and the fact that we're is man's search for meaning. So, you know, the reason why there are so many different religions out there is that it's man's, you know, search for, say, the impossible or man's search for explanation of the unknown. Uh, or you know an explanation as to as to why uh, things happen. So you know we we search for this uh, this supreme being, and we are religious beings, and, and we search for or look for um, a, a being uh, more powerful than us that is, that is there to you know provide for us and take care of us. All right, so. Um, and, and that's the thing, and, and some of the things that, that I have uh, already presented to you about, you know, knowing God. So, so I, you know, I don't know God, but there are ways to know God. You can know God through, um, you know, the people with whom you associate. I mean, you can, who knows that you may have a, you know, a family member or a friend that, that really touches your soul uh, with the things that, that, that they do. Now, you may not experience that now, but down the road, that may be uh, something that you experience. It could be. Um, you know, a girlfriend or, or a wife or uh, it could even be when, when you get married and you start to have children and you get ready to put your children, you know, into a religious school and then they start receiving the sacraments that, you know, as they're getting in touch with their, their faith and their beliefs, it gives you an opportunity to get in, in uh, contact with your or in connection with your, your faith and, and your belief and, and your practices. Uh, and that's the idea of what we're talking about being directed towards him again in in perceptive ways you know you don't always it, it's it's not going to be the you know the the flash of lightning the earthquake or anything else the, the, some of these things are going to be you know imperceptible and all of a sudden you're like you know wow how did how did we get here how did this how did this happen um, and so and, and again one of the one of the other ways of doing it is is just through through service I mean it, some of you have been, been touched by the, the service that, um, that that you have done. Uh, it, it could be nothing more than, than helping an elderly neighbor, or you know, with what, what's going on now. Maybe you're the one that goes to the grocery store for uh, an elderly neighbor that, that shouldn't, uh, you know, go venture into a you know a grocery store. Uh, maybe you're cutting their grass for them, um, whatever it might be. And you know, that's what we're talking about with being called to serve. You know, it, again, it may not seem like much, but it, it can be a big deal. You know, sitting with somebody, you know, at a lunch time, you see somebody that's sitting there that's uh, alone, and you sit down with that, that person. I mean, you don't know the impact that you may have 
um, on that person. And then that may be the event that changes their lives. And really, you don't know how it may change your life as well. So these are all things that are um, that are connected. And we also all have, again, this relates back to what we're talking about at the beginning of, of world religions, is that we have this, this call to, to holiness. We really do, um, regardless of, of what you think, how you act. Um, there is this call to holiness. And, and for some of you that say that you don't believe uh, it could be more of a, of a struggle. You just, again, you just need to get in, in relationship or, or right relationship. And um, this this psalm, and you've, you've probably all uh, heard it or you should have heard it, Psalm 23, um, and it's, it's the, the one about the you know the good shepherd, you know, the idea that the Lord is my shepherd, there's nothing that I shall want. And that's that's exactly what it, what it is saying here. And it, it's the idea that, you know, God does provide for us, but it doesn't mean that, that we're just going to sit there and, and do nothing. I mean, again, it has to do something that we are going to um, to have to participate uh, in. It's again being in in a relationship. I mean, it's, it's with anything. If, if you're if you have a girlfriend and you're not working on your relationship, the relationship is not going going to last. And so uh, that's what this is. And so that when you're in relationship. You know, there are things that, that are directed towards you in your relationship uh, with with God. And so, you know, when you look at this psalm, you know, there, um, you know, when you were in relationship, I mean, when you look at the history of the, of the Jews, when they were in right relationship with God, things went well for them. Uh, but when they were not in right relationship with them, you know, there were there were the struggles there. There were things that they they had to had to contend with, um, and some of that was brought about by their by their own uh, actions. And you know, one of the things I'm sure that we have um, you know, we have talked about this, but the um, you know the Jews believe that the Messiah is going to come and is going to defeat the enemies of the of the Jews. Well, when you when you look at the history of the Jews and their relationship with God. Um, the Jews are their own worst enemy, and you know they they continually did things that you know, took them out of relationship with God, and you know they, they suffered the consequences uh, for this. Um, and and really, when we look at when we look at the uh, the psalm, you know, it doesn't always have to mean that it's something that's happening right now. Okay, that's and that's the problem with our society today. You know, we're we're in a microwave society. You know, we can communicate immediately. We have a 24-hour you know news uh, source. You know, things you know come up on Twitter and and um, you know, Instagram and and all of this. I mean, this is just stuff that gets you know, we, we were bombarded with this. But it's the idea in the end, in the long run. Okay. He will set my t the table before me in front of my enemies. He will anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. I will dwell in the house of the Lord for endless days. Right? That that doesn't mean that it has to be here and now. This could be the reward you get from being in right relationship with God at the end of end of your earthly days. And when we talk about these endless days, we're talking about um, time time forever. The future. Okay. All right. So again, we've we've talked about meditation before. Uh, again, it is a form of, of prayer. It is is trying to, to get in right relationship with yourself and and with with God. It's getting to, to know yourself. Um, you know, it's that introspection that, that we all need at, at times. Um, and of course, it's meditation and contemplation. They they pretty much um, go together. Um, and so. You know, when, when we're, we're in contemplation, right, they're a group of contemplative nuns. I mean, they, the idea, it's almost, you know, like meditation. They wouldn't call it meditation, but it's the idea of resting in God, right, that, that we're focused on you know, the presence of God, you know, in our lives. And, you know, some people can do that by um, being out in nature. Some people can do it by being in a, in a beautiful chapel. Some of it can, you know, can be... Um, Resting in God or fully focused in the, in the presence of God uh, in the company of a, of a, a child. You know, so 
again, it, you have to be receptive and listen to to all of this. All right. So that's this kind of this last part here, saying yes to you know our our unique potential that we all have have gifts that that we have been given, and you know some of us are athletes, some of us are you know musicians, some of us uh, can um, you know act and sing and dance. Uh, others others uh, can bring comfort to, to people. Others, you know, can be supportive. Uh, others can tear apart a, a car engine and put it back together. Some of you can tear apart a computer and put it back together. Uh, you know, we, we all have, have these, these talents and that, you know, we need to, um, you know, use these, right? So, you know, one of the things that we are all wonderfully gifted, I mean, again, you're not going to be, um, you know, you may not be on, on playing football on Sunday afternoons, but you know, you have other other talents, other other abilities, right? And and for some of us, when we talk about self love, self love involves accepting who you are, accepting who you are, being able to look at yourself in the mirror and say, you know what, I am I am a, a you know creature of God, and that you know I am I am worthwhile, and that I am. You know, I am good. I am gifted. That's that's what self love is. Self love involves the fact that we accept who we are. We accept what our our, our failures are, but we also accept you know the good in each one of us. And you know, some people have to have difficulty uh, doing that. Um, and so, and again, for for some of us, we won't we won't blossom until till later. You know, it's something that, that you know it's it's a process, and you know sometimes we have to. Um, you know, stumble and fall, we'll pick ourselves back up and move forward to be able to really discover, you know, sometimes what our what our talents might be. And you know, and, you know, you try something and you realize, oh, that's not for me. And then you, you move on until you eventually find that thing that best suits uh, who you are and, and what you're called to do. All right. So, like I said, self love is essential to uh, loving someone else because if you can't love yourself, how can you expect other people to love you? If you can't love yourself, how can you expect to um, you know, love other people? And the the problem is when we talk about you know self love, loving ourselves, is that you know we have difficulty, especially in our society today, of accepting who we are, uh, because when we talk about being judged by um, things that are that are ungodly uh, by these ungodly standards. You know, we're talking about you know what we see on on TV, what we see in in uh, in the media. You know, all of the images that we're supposed to have. You know, being young, rich, and beautiful, and you know, driving a nice car, living in a nice house, and everything else. That if you don't do that, then you're not you don't measure up. And that's that's the idea that we have these uh, again these false messages about what is self worth. And this is why people get themselves in trouble sometimes is because that they're trying to measure themselves to again these ungodly standards because we can't we can't reach those we, we're not going to we're not going to be there for whatever reason it might be um, but but that's something that we need to, to understand and and um, realize that you know we have to be who we are you know, not trying to be somebody else um, and then you know the thing is that that we as individuals, you know, have the opportunity to, to try to do anything and everything we want. We have to develop ourselves, find out what what our our talents are, and we develop those talents. Uh, this um, little reflection here is uh, about the um, the gold mining in California. It says that it's sad, but uh, and, but unarguable fact that most human beings go through their lives only partially aware of the full range of their abilities. As a boy in California, I spent a good deal of time in the motherhood country located um, the location of a principal ore deposit. And like every boy my age, I listened rapidly to the tales told by the old-time prospectors in, in the area, some of them uh, veterans of the Klondike Gold Rush. Every one of them had at least one good campfire story of a lost gold mine. The details vary. The original discoverer had died in a mine or had gone crazy or killed or had been killed in a shooting scrape or had just walked off thinking the mine worthless. Uh, but the central theme was constant. Riches left untapped. 
Uh, I've come to believe that those tales offer a paradigm, uh, a model of, edu of education as most of us experience it. Uh, the mind is worked for a little, uh, for a little while and then abandoned. Um, see, that's that's the, you know the problem here is that you know the these untold riches aren't tapped by um, the individual uh, and or they they maybe just don't go far enough you know, uh, just putting in that that little extra you know uh, time effort and again a little extra it may it may be years um, before that comes about but it's that that idea that you know you, that possibility is is always out there. Uh, if you if you look at you know history and you look at the um, the accomplishments of people who have been quite old, you think about that um, you know Abraham was seventy five years of age when when God told him to to pick up all of this stuff and and move to the, to the promised land. Right, I'm going to send you to a place that that I'm going to show you, and that you know he was he you know had a child when he was a hundred years old. So, you know, these are things, it's not going to, you know, it's not going to happen when you're, when you're 18, when you're 21, when you're 25. It may take till you're 50, 60, 70, um, you know, for things to happen. I mean, think about it, you know, look at the, the people that we've got that are running for president of the United States, even before, you know, um, Vice President Biden uh, got the, well, hasn't gotten the nomination yet, but, you know, became the front runner for the Democratic nomination. You know, Bernie Sanders and Joe Biden are in their upper 70s. Um, you know, Donald Trump is in his mid to late 70s. So, you know, these are people who are wanting to be the president of the United States at a very, you know, old age. You know, so, 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 you know, it, does, it doesn't have to be something that's going to happen to you when you're, you know, 17, 25, 30. It may take a while. Right? Some, some people may reach their... You know their their goal by the time they're fifty and then retire, but then all of a sudden they realize that there's something missing in their lives and they they find their their true vocation. Uh, you know they had had a career and now they find their vocation. All right, um, I will post this uh, video on the on Moodle. You know, we take you can take a look at it. But they're having to deal again with the, the school of life is they. Um, the experiences of, of life uh, that we you know, all go through, and as I said, it's lifelong. Right? It just it doesn't it doesn't end when you get married. It doesn't end when you have kids. It doesn't end when you when you retire. It, it's something that goes on uh, forever. Okay, so you know, formal schooling doesn't always have to be um, when you when you graduate from college. You know, the idea of we, we learn something every day. And so that every every situation that we're in is an opportunity for us to uh, to gain insight into, into something, whatever it might be. Whether you're you know whether you're watching something on on TV, you're on your computer, you're on your phone, whatever it might be, you, know, you can you can gain insight into into something, and, and it gives you an opportunity to, to figure something out. Some of you, as a result of this, this uh, coronavirus, you know, might see this as something that you know you might want to become a um, you know, epidemiologist, or you want to, uh, you know, deal with infectious diseases, or whatever it might be. You might be the one that that finds the the, the vaccine that we, that we can use to to wipe out um, coronavirus. Uh, and this would have been something that you know, two months ago, you wouldn't even have had any any thought about. So, you know, again, you have to have to look at the the opportunities. And use the the talents and the abilities that, that you have to uh, to move forward. All right. um, and again, like I said, there's going to be some times that you that you're going to stumble, uh, and you know, again, you got to pick yourself up and, and move forward. I mean, it's um, we talk about how many times you know Edison failed at trying to you know accomplish something, and, and basically, it's the idea that it's it's not really a failure. You just realize that you know that that method doesn't work, you know, that way doesn't work. Um, and then you can celebrate it when you finally get through. I mean, think about the, you know, the Wright brothers and the number of different plans that they had when it came to designing the, the airplane. You know, there were a lot of times that they, that they crashed. Um, but again, they, they picked themselves up and, and then they were able to you know, celebrate the, their flight uh, at Kitty Hawk, 
the man going to the moon. You know, we had we had all kinds of, of instances where you know good things and bad things happen. So I mean these are these are just things that that are out there. These are you know these are these are opportunities uh, to learn and to grow. Okay, so that's the, uh, the last thing with the uh, for the information for uh, uh, discernment. As I said, the uh, study guide is already on uh, Moodle, and you also have the um, different documents and videos uh, that are there to to help you for this assessment that is on uh, on Friday. So. Uh, as always, again, stay safe and stay.